single-handedly going to bring Atlantic City back. Yeah. Trump, Felix will succeed. You should you should have like a billboard as you go into town. Be like, Buddy the Sable and Felix say, keep gaming. No, yeah, I would, yeah, he would just be on my shoulder. <laughs> he made a really cool noise today, Buddy the Sable. <laughs> they gave him this toy that he really likes, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he makes such cool, like, fucked up little demon noises. Yeah. Are we rolling, Chris? Okay, so okay, yeah. I'm gonna swap out your mic real quick then. Okay. Testing. Okay. So yeah, like I think you should join the like Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce, Felix. And I think we could like you know, we could start like yeah, like uh just some sort of podcaster residency here at one of these casinos, like a, at the Trop, the Slop Casino. I no, I would start out at the Slop. Um, well, I like I like the Slop. I think <laughs> well, it's, we, that um, was like the first one I went to when I like yeah. visited here for the first time. Yeah. But, like, no, I want to do like a shitty residency show where I'm like. Oh, you know, oh, I knew Sean McElroy before he was Sean McElroy. <laughs> Let me tell you, sweetie. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, we need to put Felix in charge of the Atlantic City Revitalization Program because as we were talking about, Felix has some great ideas for new casinos that they should be putting into this place to replace to replace these, uh, you know, defunct, like Moribund, the Caesars, uh, Moribund. Caesars, it's like the Wild West. They're all kind of like, oh, who cares? But Felix has got a couple of really good ideas yes. for, for casinos. So we have casinos for like both types of people. Everyone knows like there are two types of people in this world. You know, if you're an XKCD reader like myself or <laughs> like all these guys, you know, uh, that's how we met actually in the comments to those. Um, you know, so you, you usually you know how that joke goes. Like uh, there are people who understand binary and those who don't, blah, blah, blah. Really, though, like the real answer, you know, you get enough life experience. No offense to XKCD, but like that's just a joke. This is a real thing. Two types of people are racist and Muslim. Yep. <laughs> and if you're not Muslim, you're racist. If you're not Fact. racist, you're Muslim. It's Fact. true. And you might not even know it yet. But yep. uh, so you've got you've got like the the uh, the winged hussars versus the Saracens. That's yes. It. Yes. And, you know we're going to go like Muslims go first. Right. And this isn't like, we don't mean to offend anyone. We're not saying that this empire represented all Muslims, but it's like for the purpose of a casino where you need a singular theme, this is what we're doing. It's the Ottoman empire themed casino. Yes. Called Janissary. Janissary. Janissary yes. Yeah. So obviously like the design, very important pillows everywhere. Everywhere. That was an <laughs> no chairs. You sit on a, Stack of pillows at all of the uh, slot all the machines. tables. Yes, and all the tables. So like just beautiful like silk drapes, like a lot of like beautiful pattern designs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there are different like levels to it, sort of like an Ottoman palace. Uh, like the high the high roller section, you have to go through like a bunch of like silk drapes and shit. Mm -hmm. But what's important is the personnel, the dealers, like your blackjack dealer, your roulette dealer. They're gonna be hulking. They're going to be taller than everyone because they're the Janissaries. Right, yeah. They're, they're going to be big, a seven foot tall uh, poles. Yeah. yeah. And they're going to be wearing Janissary outfits. But the pit bosses are the viziers. Right. They got the yeah. onion head hats. Yeah. The CEO of the casino is casino is the sultan of, course. of the casino. It's f a fucking cool idea. Like, there could be a donar, every, donar yep. everywhere. There would be casino... Because in Turkey, they greatly... Uh, they greatly value cats, and they're really nice to cats. Yes. Casino cats. Yes, they're, they're like they, they, they're just they live in the casino, like they're the, nobody owns them. But they they hop on the blackjack table. That's good luck. You give them a little pet, give them a little yeah. scratch. They're just the casino cats, but everyone respects them. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, like just a great time. Yeah. But you know, um, racists need to gamble too, and like <laughs> I don't, I don't and like the Trump casino is gone now. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I don't like that this is a market fact, but it is. And this would be a new type of racist casino. Uh, it's called Thulian. <laughs> <laughs> this would be the, uh, the, 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 the Varg black metal themed casino. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. It's like it's, it's his version of like pre Christian uh, Christ cucked Europe. Yeah. And we'll like, sit like Middle Earth, but racist. <laughs> Will, Will had a really good idea. But more racist, I should say. You, you guys had some really good ideas for this casino where it's like, 
You don't get chips, you get runes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 And the, the actual games, uh, it, there's no cards. You just have to scry the runes. <laughs> yeah. And then and then the winner is whoever wins the test of strength. Yeah. Like there's no actual like the the, the, the the casino games is not about luck or skill. That's they're, about, they're about strength and weakness. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah, yes. gambling is Jewish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> gambling has to do with numbers. Yes, that, exactly. and money. That's it's Jewish. Jewish. Um, <laughs> the, the thing that makes both these casinos great, and like I, I, I've gone to many casinos in my life. I started when I was like eleven, and we went to Vegas for some reason. It was a fun vacation, but you know, not a lot for me to do there at the time. But sort of a lifelong love affair with casinos. Themed casinos are awesome. Absolutely. It's a bummer they're gone now. Although yeah. Now they're just these, like, they're just cubes devoted to abstract wealth. Yeah. Yeah. They just all look like, like, the newest casinos look like WeWorks. It yeah. sucks. Yeah. Uh, but the thing, even when we did have themed casinos, the thing that, like, sucked about them kind of was that, like, I guess you would have, like, themed slot machines, but, like, the games aren't, it's like, okay, how is this game of craps, like, Roman? Right. Yeah. But, Okay. In the Ottoman casino, you'll be able to bet on falcon races. <laughs> How cool is that? And well, you said it's really like when you went to Vegas when you were 11, there's not a lot for you to do, you know, because like yeah. in a casino like this, they're tr they try to have stuff for kids to do. But at Janissaries, you could like bring bring your 11 year bring your large 11 year old son and give them to the casino. <laughs> yeah. and they would start training them to gamble at an early age, but they would become I, property of the casino. I would have loved that. <laughs> <laughs> and then like from 11, you were raised into adulthood to be the best gambler in the Ottoman casino. That, oh man. Can I quantum suicide? So <laughs> I could have done that instead of my life now. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess in case you hadn't figured it out, uh, the Chapo the tour of a reopened America continues. We are broadcasting to you live from the most, the most romantic, the most resplendent, the most glamorous city in America, Atlantic City. Yeah, none yes. like it. There's, there's no other place on earth like Atlantic City. If you haven't visited Atlantic City in your life, you have to, you have to go at least one time. You if, really if do. For, if for no other reason than to feel like the most attractive person on earth. No, I, I like legitimately love it here. I <laughs> no, it's great. I legitimately love it here. I've been going here for like six years. Um, and like, yeah, it's like economically deprived. But like, I actually like most of the time I've just been like accosted by an Atlantic City or like, you know, Philadelphia native here. It's like, they're pretty nice and like cool to talk to. Like yeah. it happened to us that one time when we were at Tony's Baltimore Grill. Oh right. Yeah, and it's like people just talk to you, but they're like cool. Uh, unlike in New York, where everyone is looking at their feet. Um, <laughs> and it's Shuge like is metropolis. Yeah, but it's like there is some legitimately. I don't want to make it sound like we just come here and it's like oh it's funny to go to this fucked up place because it is like. There's like really cool shit, like beachfront bars and restaurants and shit. There are some unique restaurants here that you, the types of which don't really exist in New York. That's certainly true. Um, no, I think Classic it's classic family style Italian. Yes, yes, yes. I think it's a really unique and fun place. Obviously, I love gambling, but there's more to do than just gambling. And <laughs> no, I, I, I think I get mad. This, this show is brought to you by the Atlantic City Gaming Commission and <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. I'm not being paid for this, but I should be. But. <laughs> I like no. I get mad when like yeah, there are like young younger like urban professionals um, who like they make good money and they're like oh let's go to Palm Springs like every other asshole. It's like no, there's a gambling city on the East Coast. I know like I love Vegas. Vegas is great. That's good for your big vacation. But like for a long weekend, I wish if more people from like Philadelphia, New York, who make good money as like creative directors or whatever the fuck, came here it would economically revitalize this place. You would have to make a casino for them, you oh, know, no. like Emhoff's or something. <laughs> <laughs> make, uh, can make Brad Trammell oh the creative yeah, director of yeah. Emhoff's oh Casino. My oh, yeah. my <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. The cocktail waitresses are wearing, like, knit minions outfits. <laughs> yeah. They have goggles and cowboy boots on. <laughs> yeah. Or, or there could be... Oh, man. Actually, I'm getting... Okay, so you could make one casino that's themed off of the NYU New School rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's the New School and then the NYU Tower. Yeah, right. Like, there are two towers. But, like, you would have to make things that are unfortunately for them, but it would, like... If this place had, like, a, f like a fraction of the money Vegas has coming into it, it would be... Like, all the things that people complain about, like, 
would improve like yeah some parts of it are like dirty and economically deprived but that's not their fault yeah it, it's not their fault it's just They're like trying everyone's just like too big of an asshole to come here but if more people came here you know i, I think it would be really great for it and i i think it's a really cool place it's two and a half hours away from new york it's even closer to philadelphia it's a cool place to come come with your friends it's come fun with your family yeah, and donate them to the Genesis <laughs> Casino. <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, Felix, actually, um, going off an idea you had yesterday, we actually like when we went to the when we went to lunch today, uh, we had an idea for another Atlantic City themed casino that I think could be like a big hit and could do a lot of good for the country. So, you like you were talking yesterday about how like you know all the people who are just like like uh, Trump Trump's going to steal the election, he's going to like do a coup again or whatever. It's like, well, if you don't want him to do that, he needs a job. Mm -hmm. and, and like thing is like he needs to be distracted. He needs to make work job. He needs something that like he feels is important and glamorous and, and befitting of a man of his stature. The U.S. government should spend probably ten billion dollars at least yeah. to build him a new city in Atlantic City that they will be operated at a loss. Yeah, to just keep him in charge of it, a new Trump casino where the theme is he won the twenty twenty election. Yeah, and it's like a Trump's America in the casino, and like you go there, and it's like. He won the election. Yeah, the yeah. very top of the casino is a absolute one to one replica of the White House where he lives. Yes, and then uh, the floor show every night is him just talking yeah. to the crowd. I yeah. like that's the thing. Trump Taj Mahal closed. It lost money, and not enough people went there. That was in like what 2014, 2015. Yeah. If he did, if he had that casino now, people would go to it. Of course, like so many fucking people would go to it all the time because there are so many psychos who like. Yeah, go to Trump properties just because they like him and drink mm -hmm. those like grape martinis. Uh, and, and yeah, no, it would. The government would have to operate it at a loss for like the first few years, but I think you could actually get it so it makes money. And I, I think he would be really happy doing that, just being make believe president in yeah. a huge casino. Yeah, being, being like the president of the casino. But yes. like, but but like maybe even the U.S. government could say that like legally within the walls of the casino he is actually president. Yeah, yeah they see <laughs> yeah, it. They see yeah. it. It's like it's like Vatican City. Yes. yes, but it's Trump City, and you go there, and it's like instead of like you know uh, Cher or Celine Dion having like a residency, and they do like a couple shows a week or whatever, it's uh, Sean Hannity every night. Yes, and he just Sean Hannity talking, and then like the the big the big act like you said is Trump just comes out and he just riffs. Yeah, like Ace Rothstein show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but but less organized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be. I would go there all the time. Like getting married there. Like oh, people wow. get married at Mar-a-Lago now. So on the like pretty good chance Trump barges into your ceremony, <laughs> <laughs> like complains about uh like Nelly or because it's like I remember I saw like so many videos of him doing that after Biden got inaugurated and uh, people were like. He's ruining their day. It's like, no, if you get married at Mar-a-Lago, you want that to happen. You yeah. want you want Trump to exercise prima nocta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I would I would love like, dude, imagine you're you're like just having a great time on the slot. You're playing like the DOJ themed slots. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I got three Glenn Simpsons, you know. Um then you just feel like this sort of like weirdly like room temperature hand on your shoulder. <laughs> And he, it's, you sort of smell like McDonald's lettuce and like baby powder and shit. <laughs> and he comes behind you and he's like, how's everything tonight? Good. And before you can answer, he's like, it's amazing what we've accomplished here. <laughs> <laughs> like that would make me so happy. Yeah. For the cost of like one F35, we could solve the whole problem forever. And like most, most of the people who you're afraid of like doing January 6th again, they would just live in that casino. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be great. Yeah. They would like they would they would run out they of money. They would apply for citizenship. Yeah, they would run out of money and be like, "Please, Mister Trumpster, I'll like yeah, I'll clean the dishes with my toothbrush if I could just like <laughs> live in the smallest room you have." And he'd be like, "Okay, yeah, no, that's great though." And um, yeah, the, uh, but like also, uh, this summer the Trump virus has been defeated. No, the, the, the East Trump Coast has defeated the Trump virus. Thanks, thanks to Bill De Blasio and Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, well, really, just Bill De Blasio. Bill, Bill de Blasio is America's mayor. <laughs> Absolutely. He's finally proven it. Way more I, than Giuliani ever was. How, how much buyer's remorse do we have that we passed over him during the presidential primary? It's like, God damn it. We could have had the bungler. He would have solved coronavirus. He's like, during, like, if you, everyone like hates Bill de Blasio because like you're supposed to hate the mayor of New York, but like 
when you ask people, it's like, what? why do you hate Bill de Blasio? And I'm sure there's a building-related thing that he did is bad. I haven't looked it up or even read his Wikipedia. I don't know a lot about him. But the reason most people give is like, oh, uh, uh, he closed down Union Pool. <laughs> and it's like, no, first of all, no, he didn't. That's not his fault. Second of all, he beat the Trump virus. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it is. It is certainly defeated here in Atlantic City. Uh, evidence of this um, is uh, last night in front of Guy Fieri's Steakhouse. It's Guy Fieri's Steak and Shop House in Bally's Casino. I uh, ran into a uh, a group of young young gentlemen who were sort of flicking it up for the gram in front of Guy Fieri's Steakhouse, but um, smoking a blunt while they were doing it. That's in I, in oh, the casino. Man. I wish I didn't get. I was stricken by diarrheal magic last night, <laughs> and I had to abscond home, and I fell asleep. Um, but I wish I got to see that. It was uh, it was a, a good time had by all it's, here. It's magical. Yeah, it's like the rest of the world still paroxysms of horror, but here it's Mask of the Red Death, baby, and we're loving it. Yeah, like okay, we we were just in California, right? And Gavin Bunglersome uh, <laughs> is. You know, he's lost to the Trump virus. I yeah. can safely say the Trump virus has beaten him because people are like people like shower with their masks on over there. <laughs> yeah. that, that's how bad of a job they've done. I mean, he's going to be recalled. Caitlyn Jenner is going to be the next governor of California because he Finally. bungled the he bungled the Trump virus. He did not defeat the Trump virus. That's great. And we gotta get we gotta get Caitlyn in there. We have to get Caitlyn in there because the main problem I had, uh, besides the Trump virus when I was in LA was that like there was too much like woke stuff. Yeah, that was just that was really <laughs> making me mad. Well, what did Caitlyn Jenner said? She was like, We have We're to, gonna cancel woke. We have to awake the woke, which is like it makes no sense. Like, just try to think about that sentence. Yeah. For like, uh, your brain shuts down. It should be. Shouldn't it be? We're going to put the woke to sleep. Yeah, we're gonna Probably, put the yeah. woke to sleep permanently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um. But like, no, they've done a shit. Like, okay, the moment Cuomo got me tooed, Bill de Bunglero was allowed to run. You know, the vaccine program he saw fit. Yeah. Whatever makes him bad at whatever the things he's bad at, I don't know. Um, Sound off in the comments. Yeah. No. If you have an opinion, like if you there's something you don't like about Bill de Bongoro, contact Aaron at Bertovo. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to hear it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, I was just uh, this where I was like, have you been following like the, uh, this latest crop of freaks that the FYM boys have found? Oh with my the, god! These lo the the looks maxing guys. Oh, the, the looks maxing. The looks maxing sex guys dolls too. I haven't seen the sex. I've been I've been following the looks maxing guys, where it's a guy who's literally taking like a a, a ha like a sort of like a one of those like narrow like a sort of like archaeology hammers. What do you call those? And like just tapping his skull like between their nose yeah. and, and and like eyes to looks max. And then there's a guy who like puts rubber bands around his face to make his nose like more like uh, less upturned. But it's like women love Family Guy, <laughs> and that's how their noses look on that show. They like got sort of canceled in the comments by uh, in there by like the guys who do that. Yeah, and they were like they were like, um, oh really? Like trying to tear down guys who are just trying to improve themselves? <laughs> no, they were like, like they were like uh, like typical leftist attack on looks maxing. Like you know like uh, makes jokes. Um, uninformed opinions and then like basically advice to the exact same thing your mom tells you that got you in this situation in the first place and it's and like your Alex mom like, your mom got dick at least once <laughs> yeah yeah like, no Alex is like why wouldn't you take your mom's advice she's like objectively had more sex than you have yeah yeah no they it is funny it's funny when you get canceled by like right wing people because like they've picked up the same like whiny style yeah it's like no one's that's why the cancel culture thing is stupid because like everyone does it. Yes. It's, yeah. it's just it like the language. It is the language and behavior of being on the internet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I mean, it's like anything about veterans they're do. They're like start talking about their lived experiences, <laughs> like carrying around a really heavy bag for heroin dealers. <laughs> like you're supposed to like really care about that. But yeah, no, um, Back to the bungalow. Of course, uh, he was yeah. he was able to run his ideal vaccine program because Cuomo got me tooed for going up to women and being like, "Can I pick you up? I'm gonna pick you up. <laughs> Let me crack your back." <laughs> Putting his hand like the shit he was doing is like what like a sixth grader from a sex positive family he's does like, to flirt with girls. <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like. If I were to ask you to do a trust fall now, would you do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 so get get on the desk, and uh, I will catch you. 
Yeah, it's bad enough. Like the guy, the guy who's like, yeah, oh, I'm gonna, yeah, well, I'm gonna pick you up. But like when it's like your boss and he's the governor, <laughs> that sucks. Um, but yeah, after that, um, Cuomo or the Bunglora was like, okay, it's but it's the Bunglora time. It's Wilhelm Kaiser Wilhelm <laughs> time. Kaiser whatever Wilhelm the fuck his birth name it's is. It's motherfucking Kaiserreich time. Yeah. yeah, and he using German efficiency but Italian creativity. <laughs> We're like the most vaccinated city in America. And I've decided that now, you know, I've been a lifelong New Yorker since 2015. <laughs> and this is the best city in the world. Thank you. Well, the Bunglero, you can tell he's feeling himself. And the Felix is correct because after years of people making fun of him by calling him Big Bird, this week he finally decided to claim it. So somebody posted a picture of him like shaking hands with Big Bird, like, LOL, look at these guys. And uh, the, the Bunglero's, uh, personal twitter account replied big bird is a vertically gifted empathic leader who dedicates his life <laughs> to teaching kids and learning himself to be compared to him as a badge of honor agreed no yes. big, big, big bird's, bird's great big bird's kind of a diva but you can't say that he didn't influence music <laughs> like he's no barney he's but no like, barney yeah. but yeah. he was still who influential yeah. yeah no like but the bungalow is awesome and um no i i like do you know how good the bungalow is I was anti New York every year until this year when I realized that you have to spend more money to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and now I know it's the best city. That's right. Yeah. Yes, sir. We're, we're definitely going to miss him when he's gone because the, yeah. the, the gaggle of chumps running oh, over God, place yeah. is just very <laughs> dispiriting. Eric, I think Eric Adams is ready. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to do a good job. I was going to say, though, um, speaking of uh, a cancel culture, I would like to speak on an issue this week of, uh, you know, of, of censorship and social media and, you know, like the stifling of free speech in this country on Twitter. And I've, of course, am referring to the the banning of one of my favorite accounts, Dr. Naomi Wolf. Dr. That's Naomi such Wolf. A, if like, you reported Naomi Wolf, fuck you. She's going to she's endangering us. We're, she's spreading misinformation. I just like like. If social media is is has has any like social utility or uh, cultural purpose, it is to give everyone instant access to the unfiltered thoughts of the world's biggest nitwits. Yes, yes. and like the idea is like Naomi Wolf was a fucking artist when it came to yeah. some of her the tweets. only person that she could possibly convince not to get the vaccine would be Al Gore. Yeah, it's like yeah, no, she wasn't swaying anyone. No, no, like she probably like. She probably like there are probably people who were like anti vax or mask or whatever who saw her and were like, oh, never mind. Yeah. And they, they like they they started buying shirts that say like save a life, stay home. <laughs> uh, no, she's awesome. And the thing that made her awesome was like instead of like the usual like, you know, vax stuff, she would say these things like there's human crap in the virus. <laughs> In the in the well, uh, in the in the vaccine. One of the last things she tweeted before getting uh, before getting booted for spreading too much truth was she was like, "We need to like con seriously consider ways in which we can segregate the feces and urine of vaccinated people from like the, from non vaccinated." Because she was like, she is one of the people who pushed hardest this idea of like vaccine shedding. Yeah, the that, like, yeah, the, 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 the vaccine vaccinated people are spreading the vaccine like through their bodies. To unvaccinated people and through their shit and isn't that good though? That means like, everyone's gonna get no, vaccinated. no. But she was saying that like the unvaccinated people uh, who are getting all uh, women of a certain age who uh, report feeling um, cramps, nausea, irritability, <laughs> headaches all around at the same time of uh, being around vaccinated people, and it's just like, well, there's no other explanation for that. No, I do like that because it's one thing when you think when you're when you believe that the vaccine is doing something to the people who take it. It's like, all right, fine, you know, that's probably not true, but I understand the physics at least. Mm -hmm. The idea that like there's some sort of like uh, Wi-Fi Morgellons that you can like there's like a vibration you pick up from someone on Vax that like like they're 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 individual walking five G towers yeah and if you're around them you're you're like your DNA just starts curdling well I mean like I like even if you believe as she does she's like we need to ser seriously consider. Her segregating the feces and urine of where vaccinated. Think how do you think that will could be accomplished and where is yeah, at the sewage treatment facility they're just like it's like a conveyor belt they're like uh that poop is good uh shoot show me that here this, okay the, this stream of piss here look at the color it's all wrong yeah, if you, send if it to the vaccinated pool if you put your phone near someone's poop and the signal gets stronger <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh like god like she, she i'm just trying to like like go back through my head of like like some of the most like just like 
the best tweets of all time. Like, this is what Twitter has taken from us. Because, like, if what we're left with is that, like, Twitter, the only people who can fucking, like, uh, say anything on Twitter are just, like, the fucking, like, just boring, sanctimonious, like, just, like, the people with the, the right opinions. Yeah. Yeah. And who express them in the right way. It's just like, well, that's, that is so What's fucking the point boring. Of this? Go, that, that's like going to school. Yeah. Yes. Like, I, I need, like, I need to hear, I, I'm a, I, I'm a fan of morons and idiots. I want to hear their fucking, I want to hear what they have to say. And, they, they produce art like this is my favorite Naomi Wolf tweet was one where she was quote tweeting it was something from like like the NHS or some British organization where they were like oh it's Henry the Bear it's like it was a stuff it was yeah. a stuffed teddy bear and he was like hello mate it's me Henry I'm wearing a mask isn't it <laughs> and it's a teddy bear wearing a surgical mask and she quote tweets it with just no no <laughs> 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 yelling at a fucking teddy bear and all her tweets about like about how children are being like uh, destroyed by having to wear a mask they're like this kid he was he was loudly shouting before getting on an airplane no I don't want to wear the mask no why are we allowing this I won't eat the bugs I won't live in the cube <laughs> he's like he's a three year old and she's like I, I, the, the lassitude in their eyes their sunken faces the fluoride <laughs> yeah, stare yeah, yeah. yeah it's just like uh, Oh God, she was so fucking good. Oh God, and then uh, the the one about how she overheard Apple employees talking in a coffee shop about how they've invented a machine what that allows machine? you to try to allows you to travel back in time. She was literally talking about like iCloud, like the time, yeah, the they time, call machine. It time machine, time machine, on yeah. like iCloud. This yeah. does remind me of growing up, though. I I have I have sympathy with her because uh, where I grew up, uh, a, uh, ATMs, the the first like crop of ATMs. That were introduced in my small town in, in Wisconsin were from one company, and it was called Time with a Y T Y M E. And so, for a while, I, it's probably not true anymore. But for a while, in in Manorwalk, Wisconsin, people would say, "I'm going to go to the time machine if they were going to get money." And I heard that time is money. And I distinctly <laughs> remember having my mind blown and thinking, "Holy shit, what? There's time machines." I was six, <laughs> <laughs> but I still sympathize. Okay, uh, I get it. There was another like, like I don't know like what because like what happened because like the, at some point like as you alluded to earlier, Matt, um, she became Al Gore's during the 2000 presidential <laughs> campaign, like the 2000 election, image consultant. She, yeah. she became Al Gore's image consultant that taught him how to dress and act to appear. Uh, like comforting and non-threatening to women, and and <laughs> the thing is, like, like Al Gore is already just about the most non-threatening man. He was imaginable. An al- he was an alpha pimp. Okay, he was just too much masculinity. Yeah. And, was and essentially, like her, her, her big insight, what she was paid to do, is that she started, she she started dressing him in brown colors, <laughs> which is <laughs> a terrible idea for it's any really man bad. anywhere ever. But is, uh, she. The one who told him and Tipper to read each other at the DNC and just slobber like a couple of basset hounds fighting over a Probably. spoonful I, of the, peanut the, butter. The, the, the wearing brown and earth tones thing was the one I like, like definitely remember. But I mean, I, I would, I could imagine she was just like, she was like, Al, women are too frightened of you. Yeah. They're too frightened of your alpha sexuality. The way to assuage them is to just <laughs> grab Lick your, your wife's gr- face, grab your wife and eat her like a sandwich on stage <laughs> at the DNC. Yeah. <laughs> Just a big old Italian sub. Just, just wow, wow, wow. That's probably like what made like younger millennials sex negative. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, thank yeah, you. A lot, a lot so of these the children who listen to the show probably have no idea what we're talking about. Go YouTube this DNC tw- tw- two thousand when he went out. He just they just their faces just smashed together. Yeah, and it was so awkward. And 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 it is up there with the John Kerry salute in just Democratic tryhard cringe. Action. No, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> reporting for cool. duty. Yeah, it was like, like I'm John Kerry and I'm reporting for duty. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, mm, George W. Bush wasn't in the real military. God, no, I, I was so, that. I was like, I was an absolute, whatever resistance lib was at that point, I was one. And I was so all in on John Kerry. Oh, me even too. Though I didn't like him at the time. I was, he wasn't my choice during the primary. I was like, this, this is a guy. We got to get behind him. And I just remember hearing that and seeing it, and there's this pit of my stomach. Yeah, this just oh. sinking feeling. Oh boy! Yeah, reporting for duty. I was. Yeah, and I was like, oh, 
I'd I'd love to see Karl Rove attack him over there. And, yeah, and, and then, then he does. It's <laughs> extremely easy. And, they, <laughs> and a month later at the RNC, they're all wearing fucking purple heart band aids. And I remember every liberal was outraged at that. But it's like, I'm sorry, that is such a huge dick move. <laughs> yeah, it's so, uh, yeah. it's so, so awesome. powerful. And it's guy, like, you guys, yeah. these guys are playing on easy mode. You guys are getting washed. They got yeah. I do remember thinking like I was, I wanted Howard Dean obviously. Yeah, we were but, all Dean, yeah. But I was like, well, if we don't get him, if we get Wesley Clark, or Actually, oh, I Harry, remember, like, I was excited for Wesley Clark. Yeah, I was a John yeah. Edwards man myself. <laughs> I was like, there's something about this guy. I didn't like his politics, but I like how he treated his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's just something about this guy. That I, I just, I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, uh, just back to Naomi Wolf for a second. I like. I don't know at what point in her career she transitioned into having like from. The like the most like kind of stereotypical like college professor liberal like feminist yeah. perspective adopting from that angle virtually every crank belief you can have in America like she like chemtrails, uh, Apple time machines, uh, <laughs> Wi Fi five G, which led to the fucking amazing tweet where she was just like walking around without Wi Fi. It's peace, calm is in the air. It reminds me of Belfast in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's such an artist. It's like. That's the thing. It's like there are people with like crazy opinions, but it's like you get like a prefab built thing of crazy opinions. Like if you're a conservative guy, it's yeah. just like, oh, you're just repeating something you saw in like Gab or whatever. But she's she's like organically like she's creating artisanal takes. Yeah. She's sitting down and it's like, what's the dumbest shit like take I could have on this? It sucks. Like it sucks. Like someone was probably like they should probably get reported a lot by people who like freak out about that type of thing, and they're like, "Oh, you're Na Naomi Wolf. You're gonna get people killed." And it's like, no, she isn't. Like, She's a respected doctor. Yeah, <laughs> people listen to her. No one listens this to is her. It. This is it. It was amazing to go to Belfast. Uh, no, sorry. It was amazing to go to Belfast, which does not yet have 5G, and feel the earth, sky, <laughs> air, human experience, feel the way it did in the 70s. Calm, still, peaceful, <laughs> restful, natural. <laughs> she snapped. She absolutely snapped. You could literally just spend a day at the pub in 70s Belfast and hear a car bomb every hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, There's another one. Very distressing. I saw a cloud in London that did not move at all, along with other eyewitnesses <laughs> and plates of clouds in New York that didn't move. Much like this video, I saw a cloud that didn't move with other oh witnesses. I, I have witnesses. <laughs> See, that was great because like chemtrails are one thing. Okay, that's a chemical trail an airplane is leaving. What is the non-moving cloud? What does she think it is? Is it like a, a it's like a, a blimp, a camouflage blimp that's that's spraying more gelons on us? What the fuck does she think it is? This is a, a the account a, the at, at the real truth. They're putting together this little compilation. I'm just reading some of them now. This is a uh, replying to at Alaska Air. Thank you for noticing my tweet, Alaska Airlines. Is it normal for contrails to simply not dissipate but spread and create <laughs> cloud cover? <laughs> She's adding airlines about chemtrails. That would be. It's like I. No one has fun anymore yeah. because it's like if you are the if you're the airline social media manager, why don't you just be like, oh, sorry. Oh, my bad. Like, oh, <laughs> we'll look into that. Yeah, oh, we were doing chemtrails. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> What's so good about it is because it, what makes it interesting is it's yeah, it's as Felix said, it's the artisanal nature of it because the takes like as a whole, her opinions, it is sort of a QAnon shaped like conspiracy cloud, but coming from this like this this legacy like academic liberal lady mm -hmm. so that means that she's using her own vocabulary to say the stuff that nobody else in her group is yeah. saying and yes. that gives it a freshness and an effervescence okay this is another good one i know this is unwelcome will be attacked but many people who are unvaccinated are reporting feeling ill Vertigo, nausea, headaches, flu-like symptoms. They have and, coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if female, menstrual-like cramping after extended close contact with vaccinated people. Now watch the trolls appear. <laughs> <laughs> She's an artist. She's talking about the clockwork elves that she talks to. Yeah. About stuff. There's really like, I mean, I just, I can't get inside the mind of someone who like needs to report her. Yeah. Like you're a, you're a dick. 
Many are reporting weird or uncanny or something wrong sensation after being around vaccinated people. Severe mood effects such as depression out of nowhere for no reason. PMS type moodiness in non-menstruating women. Neediness as in pregnancy. Something hormonal seems in play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh man also speaking of um uh idiots um did you see uh, uh just another just top tier fucking moron uh zenny jardin's tweet that like this is fact not conjecture both jeffrey epstein and Ghislaine maxwell were gay i just happy pride i, I just like that's baffling to me um like i mean Okay, so should they like? Should she not go to prison? Should she go to prison more? Is she? <laughs> are they worse or better because of it? Like well, what? And then people were like, "She was just like, this is fact, not conjecture." And people were like, "What do you mean? Like the guy who was most famous for like uh, doing sex crimes to teenage girls is is gay?" And she was like, "You're telling me a straight man would walk around outside in a day with a monogram bathrobe and slippers?" And it's like. He didn't do that. He, 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 Never saw what? a single photograph of him. He was always wearing that. some dumpy Harvard sweatshirt, yeah, or like yeah. a fucking quarter zip or whatever. Yeah, that's like one of those things where it's like, um, it's feminine to order dessert. Like if yeah. you wear slippers, oh, that's you're my new gay. favorite. That's my new favorite type of account on Twitter is women who exist to just find like new vast swaths of human activity in life that if you engage in as a man means you're gay. I mean, those are usually jokes. Is the thing. Yeah, I mean those that's yeah. But they're funny jokes. though. They're really funny, but like. That's like it. Just like he didn't wear bathrobes. Like okay, slip. Like didn't like like every like boomer own slippers. Like I, it's so confusing. I can't figure out what she's doing. I can't figure out like what her angle with any of this is. It's bizarre. And then like, and this is weeks after. Like she's like, yeah, I was at all the Epstein dinners in twenty eighteen. Yes. And it was like, what's up? She what? Excuse me. Well, that one's so. Do you think she's lying I, about I, that? I think she just wants, like, I think we're sorry. Like, I think she, she wants to be cool. She wants to be cool. She and it's like her cool way of saying is like, I was, a, he's like, yeah, I had this connection and now I have insider secret knowledge about this, like, you know, scandalous, uh, you know, powerful network of crime and corruption or whatever that I never actually report. I only intone vaguely about like, you know, uh, like just QAnon shit. Just be like, watch this space. Big no, I mean, coming. She, is, she has intimated that we are going to jail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, for, like, Russia stuff. Yeah. But, like, that one's interesting, though, because, like, I, I have to believe she's lying because it's, like, those Epstein dinners, the people that would be there would be, like, yeah, Bill Gates and, like, Harvard professors. And it's, like, aren't you, like, don't people know who you are because you made a website in, like, 2002 called, like, Tech Buffet or something? <laughs> like, that's, like, why would he invite you? Like, what could you tell him? <laughs> like, no one knows who you are. Yeah, what are. did you have to offer? Yeah. I got to believe she's not telling the truth there. I could be wrong, though. I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I think, yeah, like, she's, I think she's just a liar. Like, and, and I think you're right, Matt. Like, I think the thing is, like, even if it's, like, this is a really embarrassing, weird, and, like, creepy thing you're admitting, I think it's just, like, she wants to be cool. Yeah. She wants to be seen as cool. And, like, she's always intoning about like i know what's coming like if you had access to the information i do it's like aren't you a reporter like can't you fucking <laughs> yeah, like yeah. aren't you a journalist technically like the, if you have information shouldn't you share it with the public and she's like when the time is right <laughs> oh <laughs> it's, it's, yeah it's the storm and all of her all of her like a uh, performative weed smoking posts <laughs> That's as always well a good, bad sign if, if somebody talks a lot about smoking weed it's always a bad sign you should just do it Act like you've smoked like you've been there before. Yeah, smoke like you've been here before. She's a, I, I, I like her because she's like, before she started doing all this, she was like, did all the things that I think make Gen Xers like uniquely funny. Like the thing where it's like, oh, I drank whiskey with Lemmy from Motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> she told some story where she was like, yeah, when I was 12, I drank all night with Motorhead. And it's like, A, I don't believe you. But B, if that's true, that like makes them seem lame and not you seem cool. <laughs> So this is more Naomi Wolf here. Not trying to scare anyone, but as we know now, as we now know, 13 months late, that the virus was a possible bioweapon and hundreds of conflicted scientists, business people, and bureaucrats hid that info and aided our enemies. How do we know for sure that the vaccines are also not a possible bioweapon? Which is like, I like that she says not trying to scare anyone, <laughs> but the vaccine could be a bioweapon. It's like, did you tweet that like with a flashlight under your chin at a campfire? <laughs> okay, okay, this, this, is my, this is my favorite one. This is what I was talking about uh, originally. It seems urgent for public health 
to separate vaccinated people's urine, feces from general sewage supplies, waterways, till studies are done on how mRNA sewage drinking water will affect all. The ad campaign tried to make unvaccinated toxic to others, but maybe reverse is true. It's like, okay, even if that were true, what are you going to tell all vaccinated people? Um, just start shitting in a bucket in your house. Like, don't put it, don't flush any, don't flush your piss and shit. Look, uh, you'll take my uh, my vaccinated sewage water from my cold dead hand. Okay, it's delicious. It's refreshing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I no. need my RNA. I worked Don't really talk before me before I've had my sewage piss uh, RNA water. I worked really hard on that log. <laughs> You're not just taking it from me. <laughs> What's the other thing I, I I saw this morning? Like first thing I saw when I got up this morning is that. Uh, Apparently, Jeff Bezos is going to go into space with his Next brother. Next month. Next month, My Jeff Bezos is going to go, like la- be launched on in a rocket with his brother, who like looks like a complete weirdo. He, he's, he wears like he's a cowboy. Oh, Jeff- Elon Musk has one of those. A cowboy brother? Yeah, he, yeah. Kimball Musk is a cowboy, and it's like you have Kimball to- Musk. Yeah, if you have if your brother is like an evil like your brother is like an evil guy who has like fifty billion dollars, it's like. Well, I can't just be like a generic. Oh, the the, the Coke, Coke, the cowboy say, Coke. There's the uh, the third Coke brother, Wyatt's yeah. dad, has a has an old west ghost town that private ghost town in Colorado that he hangs out in. Yeah, it's like no, he yeah. has like Billy the Kid <laughs> kids pistol and shit. Yeah, if you're the brother to the guy with like fifty billion dollars, it's like I can't just be like a regular businessman or like lawyer <laughs> or something. That's embarrassing. Yeah. I have to become a cowboy, and it's like good, cool. But uh, yeah, no, it's like uh, it's like like before he steps down from uh, CEO of Amazon, he's he's going to space. He's gonna be launched, and it's just like there's only one outcome that could make this. Yeah, you know, I mean, hope I, nothing I, bad happens. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, yeah. My sister said, I, 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 it, it, I will just say it will be a challenge for him to get into space. <laughs> Um, my sister sent this article to me and my brother and was like, why don't you guys do this? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. I will, who wouldn't love some sibling uh, vibing in, in outer space? M- me and my brother would have a great time. Absolutely. What Don't, would you do in, in orbit in zero gravity? My brother implied that if we did it, I would bring children's books about apes and sables, but <laughs> I would actually be doing bringing books for adults about them. More scientific <laughs> ones. Why? Why are you bringing books about into space? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Let me just meet an alien with nothing that I can. Well, you're use not, to you're explain. not even an alien. You're just you're orbiting the. You Earth. don't know. What if one shows up? We've been doing this. Okay, we've been doing this thing where we go into like a big shitty room that floats above the earth for a year for like what? This is like 1973. Yeah. In alien, al- like to an alien, like a hundred years is probably like a day. Mm-hmm. And it's like you could just be just, you know, random luck. You could be on the space station crew or spaceship crew that gets visited by the covenant. Mm-hmm. And it's like if they do come, you know, A, I'm bringing those books because I want to learn more about my favorite animals. But B, if they board the spacecraft and like hang out with us and they're like, what types of animal, what types of things do you have on Earth? I don't want to just describe it. I want to be like, here's everything about them. <laughs> so you can put them in your biological 3D printer and we can make one and they can hang out on the spaceship. With us. <laughs> I, do, I think that would be a hazard to like the International Space Station with like a, just a, a a bioprinted alien sable <laughs> in zero gravity. Oh, oh yeah. There's so many examples of this going wrong. Well, no, I mean, it was the first time they ever did it. And it's like, yeah, there was stuff that went wrong on Apollo 13, but they lived. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the baboon scene in Ad Astra. Yeah. I mean, what is it? Is it just tourism? Is that what it's just like? Hey, you want to go? I, I think it's just like this is a new thing for going, like really rich to people Bali. to do. Yeah. It's like, Cause like, there's nowhere else to go. It's, I mean, like, obviously, like, I, I would truly like you know cherish the ability to like to see planet earth from space to like to exist in zero gravity to like to, to see the planet to 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 slip the bonds of earth's gravity well and like 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 be in the void of the universe looking down on all planet earth but like not after like not before it gets like very common to do <laughs> i'm not going to be the first or second person to do this commercially i mean even if it, even if i could afford it i got to say i, I I mean, it is kind of shy, shocking that he's going to do it that soon. 
Because fucking Musk has been on this bullshit for years now, and he's not getting into that fucking rocket. Well, Felix, you remember on Billions where the Elon Musk character actually did that and then yeah, died and dies. blew up on television Yo, yeah, he after did. fucking Paul Giamatti's yeah. wife? He, like, dicked down Maggie Siff and was like, all right, I'm done. I have done enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, like, good yeah, facts, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if, like, okay, like, Maggie Siff is like, I'll fuck you, but, like, we can't be boyfriend and girlfriend like because you know you go to space too often and, and you don't like getting peed on yeah whatever like whatever like i remember that was the thing she was like this is just a one night thing and it's like okay if it was that like you have sex with like the hottest woman in whatever showtime series you live in <laughs> uh, which is another project i'm working on with the aliens to make the showtime network another strain of reality i would i would like to step into the ray donovan portal <laughs> <laughs> Through the Stargate into yeah. Donovan Land. Yeah. <laughs> Independence Day fighting against the Ray Donovan aliens. <laughs> It just it just like all scowling middle aged men in like black button up shirts. <laughs> but um yeah, no. Um it's like okay, you have to do that and then you have to like um all right, is your space does your spaceship work? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, I'm, I'm going to explode. Okay. Well, I fucked Maggie Stiff. So. Yeah. yeah. Going out on top. Yeah. That guy had a great life. That yeah. character. Yeah. Couldn't think of, couldn't think of uh, anything better where I'd want to do in my life. I'm so excited for Billions to come back. Felix, I just have you ever seen Contact? Yes. At the end of Contact, when they're like, we've taken the form of something that makes sense to you, but you meet the aliens and it's just Ray Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something your mind can't That's one of, my, you know, one of my family's business ideas. We have what? a, oh, we have a sh- please tell. Well, I, you know, I told you guys about the one off air and it's like a lamp you call the sun lamp where you put a bullshit solar panel or rock on it. Better yet, a rock that doesn't even like absorb energy, but you're like, you have to put it near a window of sunlight and then it will shoot like, um, like light from the light bulb that replicates sunlight. And it's for people who have depression and it's like, it doesn't work. It's complete pseudo- pseudoscience. It would cost $130. Everyone below the age of 29 would buy one. Absolutely. You'd make like $20 billion. But uh, our other idea, and this is, I can't, uh, this is actually um, from my brother and sister talking about billions. Uh, it would be called the Showtime Collection. And it's okay. a collection of shirts inspired by and worn by characters on Billions, Homeland, uh, you know, Ray Donovan, all those shows. Like, we all know how those characters look. Was Californication and Showtime? Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Californication would be, like, the casual collection. <laughs> <laughs> but it, they're they're specially built for, like, a type of middle-aged man that, you know, he's battling carbohydrates in his middle age. He still wants to look sleek. He wants to look cool like Ray Donovan. Like Bobby Axe. Like Bobby Axe. And it's what they are is they're black button-up shirts and dark blue ones and, like, very skinny Donna Karen men's suits. That essentially, like, the midsection is sort of like a Kevlar material that acts as, like, a corset right, for love handles and stuff. Yeah. And I think that would be pretty cool. I think a it lot would. of older guys would be interested in that. Yeah. And, um, no, that idea, I mean, even if that idea doesn't make a lot of money because the margins on clothing can be bad, Sorry, I'm, it would make people happy. I'm just still thinking about Chris's idea, like, of, of contact where mm-hmm. the aliens take, take just take a form that, like, you is, like, understandable. And in contact, of course, it's, like, uh, her dead father. And it's, like, very beautiful and meaningful. But, like, I go through the fucking wormhole and then it's just, like, Hello, Will. It's me. It's me, Damian Lewis. I'm talking in an American accent because you remember me as from Band of Brothers and Billions. Will, Will, you have to go do the big trade. <laughs> what does it all mean? What does it mean, Damian? You have to do the trade, Will. Yeah. You have to. You have to short it, or Axe Cap will be insolvent. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see Metallica in Iceland. <laughs> Billions is so fucking awesome. I, I, I needed to come back. It's no, they're filming again. Well, I mean, the last the season, the last season company. was like a bridge. You know, I mean, we didn't get like a, a real resolution to like. Um, is like how's Maggie Siff's relationship with Frank Grillo, the artist, going to turn out? <laughs> the best artist in the, the world. The best artist in the world. <laughs> Played by Frank Grillo. Frank Grillo <laughs> plays an artist. Yes, yeah. plays an artist. Okay. And a painter. A and painter. There, there are so many scenes where it's like, um, like Bobby Axe is trying to like big dick him by being like, what if I gave you uh, $200 million to make a bunch of paintings? And Frank Grillo is like, I hate it when money gets involved in my art. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he convinces him to be like, uh, to like take this, uh, I don't know, like residency with like to create artwork for Bobby Axe exclusively <laughs> by giving him the best pizza in the world that Bobby Axe also owns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's this awesome scene where like, uh, Maggie Siff, the, uh, Frank Grillo, Bobby Axe, and Wags are like having dinner, and the chef is like some slave that Bobby Axe bought. <laughs> is like some, some like just he's like what does he look? He looks like one of the MythBusters. He's like that type of older, yeah, yeah. cool older dude with the like big thick glasses, and he's he's like, what's that French dish where you like drown the bird in? Oh, uh, Ortolan, 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 Ortolan bunting, yeah. yeah. They, like eat Ortolan and. Bobby acts like they do that, and then Bobby acts like continues to write a big dick Frank Grillo by being like, "So is this the most money you've ever seen before?" <laughs> like it's such a cool show. I can't wait. They're setting everything up so that Axe and um, Maggie Siff bone each other. Like it's like sort of it's, like they, a, I feel like they've been building towards that for a long. time. They've been time building towards that show. since the first episode. Remember, like it's the third episode where they just like. To avoid wiretaps, they both like get into a like a big bathtub together naked. <laughs> God, I got such a rewatch billions ago. <laughs> billions fucking rocks. Like you don't. Everyone's no, watching so much bullshit that they're like, it's good because it makes me feel bad. No, Billions is actually the best show in no, the world. No, you said it, it, it's Sons of Anarchy for quarter zip fleece guys. Yeah, no. If you're like too smart for Sons of Anarchy, like you want to watch it, but it's like. Okay, you I can't relate got, to like white trash the, criminals. Well, yeah, the deals like, aren't big enough. Yeah, the, the yeah, trades exactly. are too so, small. Yeah, the, the biggest deal they ever did on Sons of Anarchy was for thirty grand. Yeah, yeah <laughs> no, Bobby X like pisses that away. Yeah, like it's off screen. Yeah, <laughs> but no, but uh, on billions. Oh my god, they should do a crossover and like on billions. Bobby Axe like buys the Sam Crow and he's like, this is my biker gang. They're my personal <laughs> biker gang. <laughs> I'm, I'm sponsoring Sam Crow. They that become would, his Varingian guard. <laughs> yeah. That would be so, well, they would ruin Axe Cap. Like one day oh, there and they're like accidentally killing half the traitors. Yeah. <laughs> maybe like maybe they last a little longer now that Jax is dead, but it's like I do not see that being like a good relationship. Yeah. But yeah, no, they're like, we liquidated all of the assets to buy ping ball machines. <laughs> yeah. I, I There should be a cross. Oh, Bobby X could get a lot of mileage out of the protagonist of the Mayans who has a photographic memory. Oh, you're right. Yeah. They're just like, dude, put that, put that, put that, put that guy in front of a Bloomberg terminal. Yeah. Get him on the floor. <laughs> get him on the floor. Yeah. Dude, Dollar Bill, me and the actor who played, uh, who plays Dollar Bill got into an <laughs> argument over Max Rose. And it's the first time that I've ever been like, earnestly like sir i love your work i just don't wait a minute you got a twitter argument with david constable no no no, no not no, not wags a uh, dollar bill oh yeah i meant to say dollar bill yeah uh kelly shit, oh, kelly o'coin kello kelly o'coin and i was like sir it's the first time i've ever done this where i like mean it in earnest and it's like i actually love your work but like <laughs> i just don't agree with you on this i don't like what max rose said about Ilan omar sir and he's too short <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's like, but I still followed him. I still follow him. He's not followed me back. That's fine. <laughs> He's a better artist than me. But um, no, that's um, that's the best show. Uh, well, I mean, it's like lastly, though, to close out here today, um, you were talking about like uh, men's fashion and like the a certain kind of yeah, you know, like middle aged older man who's who's you know losing the war on carbohydrates. Yeah, we're all fighting it. We're all fighting. It. I mean, it's hard to imagine life without it. You know? Yeah, yeah, bread. Love it. We love it, folks. <laughs> it's, it's great. Yeah, bread's so, awesome. We do love it. The other thing... Okay, so this, this video everyone was sharing the other day of, uh, you know, the, the true president of Atlantic City, Donald Trump. He was back again, and he was wearing what looked like to be uh, suit pants that were on backwards. It, it looked and people that way. Say, people said it was on backwards because you couldn't see, like, a fly or whatever. But I think, like, it, they're missing the more important point of that image, which is that we must return to, again and again, as we always do, Trump is... Diped up. Diped up one hundred percent. Oh my god! He's one hundred percent yeah. diped up. The only and like, way that that and his suit pants have to be like because it's ballooning. They're it's almost like bulging. MC Hammer pants. Yes. They have to be like so blousy and like like so fucking. And like, even there, and even with the big blousy fabric, you can see this you huge see the pressure. Bulge. You see the bulge, and it's like unless he's like stuffing his gut under his belt, that's got to be a diaper. He is he's diaped. most likely wearing a diaper because it's like you do have to pay the piper sometimes, and it's like you look at like how shitty his habits are yeah it's like he does literally everything they tell you not to do like i can't imagine he really drinks a lot of water no zero water. i don't think he has drank water I don't think he has since ever drunk, 1973 he has never drunk a glass of plain 
tap water in his life. He's got to be like the first guy who is like, I just don't like the taste of water. Yeah, no, he's he like, was probably the guy who invented that. He's like, it's yeah, no, it's, it's disgusting. Doesn't taste like anything. Doesn't taste like anything. Why would you drink it? Fools drink this. No, thank yeah. you. Um, he sleeps like three hours yep. a night. <laughs> <laughs> just eats fucking uh, refined processed shit. I mean, the only bad habit he doesn't have is like smoking and, yeah, and drinking, smoking drink, and yeah. drinking. The yeah. two cool bad. Habits. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, you got to pay the piper, and he's like. Somehow still alive. He survived coronavirus. I, I guarantee you he will live to be in his in his. 90s. Oh, yeah. And that's because his ass is like a malfunctioning Slurpee machine. <laughs> yeah, no. It's that's just a constant. The piper. It's always coming out. <laughs> so it can't the- build up. It's just always dripping out. <laughs> you of you hear that, Naomi Wolf? He's unvaccinated. It's good to go in the sewage system. Yeah. Well, he's like, you can yeah. be around Trump's dumps, Naomi. It's OK. <laughs> you won't feel menstrual cramps. He's like, that's absolutely it. Like. Paying the piper for him is just like he can't like walk an inch without like some really like gr- like gross like weirdly dark pee or like <laughs> liquid crap coming out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's yeah, and like, if it wasn't you know, for that, he would have exploded long ago. Like, yeah. Like a deer tick. Yeah. Like him the idea of him taking a shit, like really like that's gotta be difficult for him. I can't imagine him sitting on a toilet. Yeah. Yeah, it just happens while he's standing. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it's um and it's nothing to be ashamed of. No. no. Hey, it's helped. It's yeah. he's got it's gotten him this far. Yeah. People making fun of Donald Trump for like crapping and for pissing, being incontinent. Yeah. You know, everywhere he goes all the time, twenty four hours a day. It's like, you know, he's not gonna see that, but I who also do that. Not because of a medical problem. I just like, I just, you know, sometimes you don't want to take a stroll. Sometimes you're in, engaged in a good conversation and you just got to let a little hard, little hard marble of crap roll out of your leg. Um, um, I will see it and it will hurt my feelings. Well, on that note, let's close out today's show. Uh, uh, listeners, wish us luck tonight. Lady Luck will be on our side. Tonight, we will be playing the loosest slots in America. I will be hopefully winning big on the following slot machines. Uh, Auspicious Dragons, M- Mysteries of the Orient, A- Arabian <laughs> Thieves, <laughs> luck, owed, uh, uh, luck Owed to Mix. I will be playing the Californication slot machine. I'm hoping to get three Ducovnies or at least two Madeline Zimas. <laughs> How is, by the way, how is there not a billions fucking slot machine? This is absurd. I'll be playing um, <laughs> that would be the, really the, pan, cool. the, the Chinese panda slot machine. Oh, uh, God. Um, uh, Lady Fortuna, the sexy slot machine. Oh, okay, no. If you're against, like, if you're like, oh, I hate wokeness, start gambling. It's true. There's yeah, no wokeness. It's true. You go to <laughs> the, yeah. the slot machines, they have never heard of cultural appropriation. Or if they heard, have, they think it's good. Yeah. There should be, there should be a. <laughs> Like, they've never done this, obviously, because of, like, so many of the people who come here are just, like, it's, like, ancient Jewish guys from Long Island. But it would be fun if there was a uh, slot, slot machine that was just, like, well, the, happy it's merchant. A, the greedy Jew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they have everything else. Rabbi's like, treasure. Yeah. <laughs> Rabbi's he's like running to make sure you don't get his treasure that's buried in the torah (laughs) every rabbi has treasure i took a photo of this one last night it's called uh riches with daikoku and it's just this like like cartoon buddha figure smiling with like a fu manchu mustache it's like they do it for everyone else it's true like (laughs) it's like we should like it's just fair game like yeah my grandmother always warned me about gambling because she said it's the Jews vice, <laughs> which is, you know, it, for me, it's not. But for people who are bad at it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, we should be represented on there. You, you, you either got to make fun of everyone or no one. Yep. And and that's why the Thulean will just be rune scrying and feats of strength. Yep. No yeah. Gambling. Caper, to- caper, yep. caper tossing. Yep. You can you can get a rune there, but you have to defeat another patron. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're not assigned. No. And anytime somebody could just come in the room and you have to kick them out. And yeah. if they get you, well, get, you got to fight somebody else. Yeah, you can't complain to the sorcerer who's in charge of the casino. <laughs> no, you're saying so instead of pit bosses, they have mages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of dealers, they have clerics. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just want to 
at the very end of the episode, thank everybody who tuned in to the uh, yes. the Frequency One mm-hmm. Festival over the weekend. Uh, it was really, really great. Really great vibes throughout the entire day. Um, and I, from what I saw, it seems like people very much enjoyed it. So I wanted to thank you. Uh, I also, I need to debrief with the Frequency people to confirm how this will happen. But because I know that there were some tech difficulties at the very beginning for the E1 set. And then when everybody came in to see Chapo, we will be releasing those uh, as standalone videos to at least paying uh, people who bought tickets to at least ticket holders and possibly just publicly. I don't know. I have to figure out exactly how this is going to work and connect with frequency, but the uh, Chapo and E1 shows will be made available for at least ticket holders. And then just on this, you know, we've already been talking about like now that we've done this once, we can maybe do it again. You know, there are different, lots of different ways we were doing this. I mean, there's no guarantees of this, but once we can tour again, maybe we do something like, I don't know, do an E1 Chapo show in another city with maybe a band and put that on frequency as well as being just like a live show that people can come and attend. So it's like both. I don't know. There are a lot of things we can do with this. Thank you for tuning in. It meant a lot to me. I had a great time and I know everybody else did. And uh, it all was done thanks to Three the absolute for- uh, grinding of Chris Wave. Uh, yeah. So uh, big ups to him for it was, putting it together. It was a fucking insane like list of list of performers. Like incredible, incredible. And I, I liked hearing a lot of like feedback from uh, like people who tuned in or whatever who said that like yeah like I, I bought tickets to see Chopper or E One, but if you only watch them, like you fucked up because the music acts were all fantastic. They were all really fucking good, and uh, it was a. Three cheers for Chris Raid. Hip, 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 hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. I'm hooray. What? <laughs> what? Shit. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Goodbye, everybody.